Hello and welcome to episode number 22 of Gamify 24-7. I'm back this week. I made it on time and I'm here and I'm looking very much forward to catching up with everyone, finding out what everyone's been up to. And we'll get all the details about how you can leave us a comment and tell us what you've been playing during the show. So without further ado, welcome to Gamify 24-7. <laughs> Okay, so this week then, what have you guys been up to? Let's let's go round the table. We don't have a table, but let's just imagine we have a virtual table. It's like um, Games Master. Do you remember that on the telly, Games yeah. Master? Yeah. It's a bit like that. Games Master. There is a table in front of you. Take two steps to the left. Move one. For no, never mind. You guys are too oh, young. Anyway, like one of those, like a oh, text you, adventure. Are uh, you thinking? Was it? Was it, it it's wasn't not Games Master. Master. It's it's night night. Nightmare. Oh. Night oh, yeah. yes. Yeah, because yes, doesn't yeah. isn't there like a show at the fringe that you that's like that is it? on stage? I That'd think be so. so. Cool. I'm pretty sure. They need to bring Night Nightmare back with I, VR. I think that there is actually a, a show that was at the fringe last year at least where you got to do that. There's also the dark room as well, if anyone's been to that the before. Dark room. It's hilarious. Oh, yeah. I find it so sad we've had so many weeks of being like, Oh, we're ten now, we're in double figures, we're in sixteen, <laughs> we're we can finally do sixteen year old things. We're twenty one, now we're just adults. I'm like, there's no jokes now. here. But like twenty eight, it's twenty five, well, not one that you can Trust me, adopt there's jokes. <laughs> <laughs> I've got jokes forever. <laughs> They're bad. But what is great now, we have a brilliant song because we're feeling 22. I was singing that, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so we've I got a song like now. But will it make sing that? No, I don't think so. You just heard me sing it. It's not. It's not good. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, you get, speaking of Games Master, we, we need to get that back on the telly as well. That was that was great. I mean, although obviously it won't be the same without Sir Patrick Moore doing the the, the eye thing. Forget and, Games uh, Master. We've got Games Lounge. <laughs> That's my tribute to Games Master. Bits. Well, can you, can you do a can you do a Sir Patrick Moore type thing then on it? Uh, Frank's falling in that spot right now. <laughs> All right, okay. If you work on that, then then you know, then that's that'll be the whole way. The problem. Last Frank to wear a monocle during his, uh, during his section. Good, that's fine, and then we're sorted. Um, so there, we are going to be talking a little bit about retro because there's a couple of releases that are um, quite exciting, and we'll come on to that in a moment. First of all, though, back to the table, which I mentioned about 10 minutes ago. And never got to do. Uh, Anton, what have you been playing or buying or purchasing oh this week? I mentioned on the last podcast that the Steam sales have been very enticing. I now think it's too enticing. I think, <laughs> put it this way, I've bought 36 games, a Steam Ooh. controller and a Steam Link. My I regret God. everything. Out of those 36 games, I've just played only Euro Truck Simulator. You bought 36 <laughs> games? Oh my God. <laughs> Mentally, I think with a contro Steam controller, Steam Link, 36 games only came out to about £70. Good, oh my they? god! Yeah, and some of those games are like, for instance, Euro Truck Simulator, the only game you need. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's like a four pound game. So just imagine. What? How what, what do you do in it? You cruise. Like, yeah. what, it, what, oh. is, what is this? Because like, if you it's, said farming simulator, I'd be like, yes, I understand what a farm is. But what? What is this? What, what do you, you do? Well, you start off. You're a rookie. You're amateur. <laughs> pathetic. You have to go and get deliveries. Go around Europe. Oh my um, god, really? Yeah, it's actually super this realistic. This sounds like my type of thing. Like my, I like pretending I have jobs that I mm -hmm. really wouldn't have in your life. It's super realistic, so you need to watch your speed, you need to do your indicators, you need to... Oh my your, god, really? You need to manage your sleep and your, like, you'll have deadlines for when stuff needs to oh, get... Oh, like, this sounds delivered. like persona driving. <laughs> oh. There's... There's a guy online that had the virtual reality version when, like, VR was just starting to come up, mm -hmm. and he had a, a dev kit 2 or something. And he was playing that bit. He had it all set up, so he had these like gear stuck in his wheel. And he just sat there and he was like this in the game. <laughs> and just playing the game like this for like that hours and hours like driving around the US. the best thing ever. <laughs> they come on PlayStation, because that would be well Unfortunately not. I won't lie, I've got like a controller. It uses every single button and I still have like 20 buttons on the keyboard. It's literally, you have to manage everything. It's super relaxing though, it's like at the end of the day, You've done tons of work. You're just like, yeah, I'm just going to put on cruise control so and just go down the motorway. So it's kind of like you've got this job, like in real life, so that when you're finished it, you're like, that was a hard day's work. Now I'm going to go to sleep for real, and you feel quite accomplished, <laughs> even if you've not been paid. Yep. Um, and later <laughs> on, you manage company and staff and deliveries. Shouldn't oh. you put that on your CV? 
like all your management and driving like, for five years <laughs> like <laughs> I, had, I had my own staff i managed everything time management skills I, actually that's a good point like games are getting so in depth with stuff like that especially with vr like was mentioned becoming so realistic could you actually use that as a cv thing because you could say well listen I've actually done the job. There's my stats. Well, maybe you could like have like a simulator like on VR that's like training for yeah. a job, kind of or well, qualification you, for a job. If you think about pilots, they spend uh, thousands of pounds. They have to save up thousands of pounds in order to get to the simulators, let uh-huh. alone flying for real. And that that determines whether or not they're ready or able to become pilots because uh-huh. they get reviewed by other pilots in the simulator because it's so realistic. So I guess, you know, there's something... Anton, the truck driver. That's <laughs> your new career move then. I like it. I'm I ready. Like it. <laughs> it sounds good. Sean, what have you been playing this week or buying or purchasing or I've not I've not actually played much, to be honest. Uh, I, got, I went and bought Farpoint for the PlayStation VR. I'm waiting for that to come. It should be coming tomorrow. So that's with the aim controller bit. I got that because I want Lindsay to play it on like the, uh, a live stream. So I thought I'd get that because it's big giant spiders. And uh, apparently it's amazing as well. Oh my so, god, spiders! Yeah, really? it's like giant spiders oh, and stuff. VR oh, that would be so horrible. <laughs> and, and apparently it's like one of the best VR games for PlayStation VR. So oh my god, can I, was, I try it? I was skeptical a little bit, and the gun because it came in a, a bundle, it was so hard to get. Everywhere was bumping up by about fifty quid. So if you wanted the bundle, it was like hundred and fifty pound to buy it. I was like, right, I'm holding off, waiting for it now. But uh, I've managed to get it from one of the shops online and it was like 85 quid, so I just, I just went ahead and bought it. And I thought, even if it turns out rubbish, if I didn't enjoy it, which I highly doubt, if it turns out rubbish, I'll just flog on the gun. So nice. I thought it was worth it. So I got that and I bought the PlayStation, sorry, not PlayStation, the SNES Mini Classic. So I ordered two of them this time. I was not missing out like I did last <laughs> time. I thought, right, I'm going to jump on the bandwagon, I'm going to buy two. So I ordered one from Amazon and one from Nintendo Direct. So... Even if one screws up, I'll have hopefully one coming for another one. Oh, that's why I couldn't get one then. <laughs> <laughs> What's yeah. pretty cool about them is you can get in both like the American style and the European yeah. style in Europe. So what did you go for? I went for the for the European style because the American style thing looks horrible. Likewise. <laughs> yeah, it's too square and blocky and stuff. I don't know if some people like that because that's probably what they grew up with. So nostalgia will kick in. But the, the one that we had here in the UK was such a nice console. It was a beautiful console. Well, We're if com- you need somebody else to play a scary spider game yeah, okay. on the stream, then I am totally up for that. Because <laughs> I hate spiders and it sounds funny. We'll, we'll have a PlayStation VR aim night. Yeah. We're going to come on to the SNES Mini. We're going to talk a bit more about that, and you're going to tell me where I can get my hands on one because it's annoying me. And Kat, <laughs> what have you been playing this week, Kat? Well... I was staying away from the sales, as I mentioned in the last podcast. Smart move. Yeah, yeah, I've been staying well away because PlayStation have got some sales on at the moment. They're not amazing. I was quite tempted by the Witcher Game of the Year edition for, Mm -hmm. I can't remember how much, but it was cheaper than Amazon. So I was like, oh, maybe. But then I was like, no, Persona 5, I've still not done that. So I I can't do anything else. But last night, I, I lost my back hard last weekend. So... Finally got a new one delivered on Saturday and was like... Made sure it worked. I have a card now. I should treat myself because I haven't <laughs> bought anything like a week. So, yeah, I was like, oh, Crash Bandicoot just came out. Maybe I should buy that. But then at the last minute, I was alone in the dark in my flat with just me and the cat because my flatmate's away. So I was like feeling a bit pensive and I was like, hmm, I should really play something I should I can play in the dark and I won't be too happy about it, but I won't be that sad either. So... <laughs> I've got a game that I've wanted. It only came out a couple of months ago, but I saw it on Facebook and everything. What Remains of Edith Finch? I don't know. I did bypass the sale because it was not in the sale. Yeah. I just paid the full price for it because I wanted to play it. There's um, a sale, I'll pay full price. <laughs> yeah, I know. I could have bought any number of things in the sale, but I bought this one instead. And I did finish it in my in one sitting because mm. it's only a couple hours. It's mm. kind of like... Um, it cost you 35 quid. No, it didn't cost me 35 quid. It cost 15 oh, yeah, oh. It's okay. It's okay. If Crash Bandicoot would have cost me 35 right, quid. Right, right, right. Um, no, this one was like... You know, more in the vein of like Gone Home and like everybody's gone to the Rapture and mm, okay. like Firewatch. So people call them walking simulators, which is kind of what mm. they are a little bit. But like the story of this one was so, so good. And it's a weird one where you, you play as this girl who goes back to her family house and there's all these rooms in the house that she's never been in because they got sealed up when the people died, even though they were like her great, great aunts and uncles or whatever. So she never met them. 
and you're kind of going through the house and figuring out like how everybody died but you get to like play as them and figure out it's and all the different stories are like a different kind of style of gameplay and a different type of story so it's it all mingles together it's beautiful so it was like sad but lovely (laughs) <laughs> like I, w- I was quite sad at the end, but also like, oh, that was good. I like so, the look of it, actually, the game. I it's like, I, really it's, good. I, I liked Everybody's Gone to Rapture. I, I thought that was great when it came out, although there was a lot of hype about it. Um, yeah, but, well, because um, of the BAFTAs, I think everyone kind of got hyped up about that. And I did yeah. play that on the channel, actually, and it's oh, not yeah. something you should ever play on a YouTube channel because it's, it's too boring. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's re- If you're sitting on your own and playing it, it's lovely, lovely yeah. soundtrack, and it looks beautiful and everything. But... If you're, if you're going in blind as well, it, you can... It's a walking, definitely. You can't run in it at all. And, yeah. uh, you can you can go the wrong way and be wandering about this gigantic Yorkshire town or whatever for ages. So basically, so. we've got two simulators. We've got Anton's now the truck simulator expert. We've got the walking <laughs> simulator expert. I'm the walking expert. simulator expert. <laughs> but um, the, the game that I bought, the What Remains of Edith Finch, is really, really good. It's by uh, Giant Sparrow. They made the unfinished Swan, which I did The, art, play, the artwork's almost the same. It's lovely. got the same kind of... Uh, feel the artwork complete. It's got that whole kind of black and white thing in the in the artwork. It's cool. Yeah, like it's it. really lovely. There's lovely music in it too. So I, I finished that last night. I just played it all in a winner, and today I went back and replayed some of the stuff to get all the trophies. So I've I've been good. And Persona, I finished the first castle. Ooh. Yes. <laughs> I thought you were going to see the game. I was like, what? Uh-huh, no, it has been a good lazy gaming weekend for me, but not quite that good. <laughs> I am. I was playing it before here. Like I was loath to get dressed to come here because I was playing Persona. I was like, I better leave now. <laughs> so, got real life things to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, I was managing my honest student life at the moment. So I'm finishing the first <laughs> castle. I have to be an honest student. So yourself, Michael. What was you been playing? I've been getting acquainted with my Switch because I was in London for half the week. So mm-hmm. um, I play a lot of the time docked. So I started playing. Uh, I decided I was going to play something different. So I actually bought Lego City because I played uh, half of it on the Wii U. I actually love Lego City. I just I, It's my favourite Lego game. I don't know why. I just think it's really funny. <laughs> is, it like funny a, to get. is it like a normal Lego game where there's like a... You know, like you get like Lego Harry Potter and Batman it's like, and stuff. It's like it's like a combo of that in a kind of GTA Simpsons hit and run style clone, <laughs> um, but it's really cool. It's really fun. It's it's completely family friendly. But it's actually, you know what? It's co- it's it, the I think the comedy in it's actually really funny. I think there's some really funny bits in it, um, and the missions are kind of fun. And it's just a nice, easy-going game that you can play, uh, you can wander about, you know, in the same way that you do in any open-world game. You can just wander about and do whatever, or you can um, you can do the missions, and it's good. It's good fun. It's like, especially for, for, for travelling, I was just like, yeah, this is kind of easy. I don't have to think about it too much. <laughs> was, so, it, was it the digital version or the physical version? No, so I've got this kind of thing. So I was just going to come on to that, because what I've also done is I've bought myself Bomberman with all the... With all the um, changes and the updates, I've heard good things about Bomberman after the updates happened. The initial 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 reviews were pretty poor, but it seems to have improved with the updates, and people are saying it's pretty much a different game now from from the original uh, release. Now they've just reduced Bomberman digitally to twenty nine ninety nine on the Switch store. And I've still bought the physical version for, I think I got it for 31 And the reason being, I'm loath not to get the cool little boxes and the cool yeah. little cartridge. Mm. I've just got this thing about it um, that, that I kind of I, I kind of want to be physical with the Switch for as much as possible. Um, I'm going to get physical. <laughs> I'm going to get physical, oh. physical, physical. Hey, it's a tune, you know. So um, <laughs> that and um, I also pre-ordered uh, Super Mario Odyssey and I have already pre-ordered Splatoon. Um, did you order with a hat? A cappy? No, I didn't. I just went boring old, you know. But I did get the Splatoon. I pre-ordered the Splatoon 2 Pro Controller as well. Cool. Ooh, I've got I've got a Pro Controller, but I'm getting, I, I wanted a second one, so. Ooh, yeah. So, so I've, got, I've gone all Switch this week, and, and I'm kind of falling in love with the Switch even more to the point where I'm becoming a collector. Oh. I want to so be a collector. you want to get physical with the Switch, and you're falling in love with the Switch. Oh. My well, goodness. it's just flicked a switch in me somewhere, oh. and you know, and uh, anyway, moving on. Speaking so, of like pre orders, though, I wanted to ask if anyone else knows, like, you know, the Undertale. I know, Anton, you're into it. Like, yeah. The Undertale physical mm-hmm. coffee. Is that coming out here? Um, it will be coming out here. We don't know anything I about it. I need that locket in my life. And also, like, I've been considering, like, 
actually pre-ordering it from America just for the locket. Mm -hmm. But then I'd have the copy of the game that I couldn't even play here. Well, you could which play, is, uh, you could play the PlayStation on PlayStation Four. But it'd be like the American. I sorry, that surely. It's uh, PS4 is not region locked, thankfully. Really? So yeah, yeah if you yeah, really yeah, want to pre-order, my mind has been. Blown, guys. <laughs> Can we add that, please? The <laughs> noise, Mike. We need to put that just for two seconds. My eyes almost went like cross-eyed there as well because I was just like, "What?" Okay, that never mind. I wanted the Vita to well. be honest, but you're safe there too. Not no PlayStation uh, consoles ever been region locked. <laughs> yeah. I, yeah. Again, add the noise again. That's just like, <laughs> oh my god, really? Yeah, I've got games <gasps> there for the PlayStation Vita that that are US uh, versions. They worked what well. a Bleep, and it's cheaper, as I'm saying, it's bleep, much cheaper. Bleep, I am. Um, you like, those you can go in the swears. digital store and set, set up an American account as well. What the heck? Buy games for, for America. How did I not know this? This has changed my life, guys. Talk about Undertale, though. <laughs> yeah. That oh. guy, Andrew Sampson, Andrew MD5 on Twitter, he's the guy that's making the Rainway app that we were mentioning earlier. Uh, did we mention it already? Anyway, no, no, you <laughs> no, mentioned, no, mentioned it, but we weren't recording, recording it. Yet. <laughs> <laughs> but he showed off Undertale streaming through to the Switch. Oh, very nice. Right, so, yeah. Cool. Oh, my um, Speaking of pre-orders, I also, um, or, or when you get something and get a kind of special something with it, or when you pre-order stuff like the key ring and whatever else, um, I got Cave Story for the Switch. Cool. And I've gone for, I managed to get an, from the American store um, because they give you a kind of really cool little booklet with kind of a history and a backstory to it, which doesn't come with the UK edition. And it was cheaper as well because of the way it worked out. So um, so that was the same kind of reasoning for me. It was like, well, I want I And I thought, you know what? It's quite a good price. It's quite a good deal. And it's got a little bit of extra with it as well. Do you, do you know for our American listeners, they're actually in a really lucky position. I was like checking this earlier. And when I say earlier, I mean like last week. I had to renew my student uh, account for Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. But if you're in America and you've got a Prime account, you get 20% off all pre-orders. So any game that's like, four, like they're cheaper than anyway, they're $49 and you get 20% off that. So people are getting them for like $40 for a brand new Switch game. But they're costing 50 quid here and we don't get the same discount. Even if, even if you buy Prime, you only get two pound off. Yeah. It's rubbish. <laughs> Yeah, the two pound off thing. That's what I've I've got for the for Super Mario Odyssey. But it's yeah, yeah you're right. It's, it is a bit unfair. But come on, sort that out for us, will you? Amazon, give us some more discount. You know, we give you <laughs> lots of money. We pretty much buy half our stuff off of you. So I, come on. yeah, we must all name drop it a few times per episode as well. Yeah, yeah. I think we're due. A per yeah, sponsors exactly. would just give us personal discounts. That'd be great. Like, f we'll be happy with three free pre-ordered games per person per year. We're okay with that. That's fine. Yeah. Like, what's that like? Yeah, that's like a that. that's a hundred quid each. It's all right. Yeah. That's fine. I I would be happy with that. Yeah, I'd be happy with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could keep trying, but you know, I, I'm not holding out much hope. All right then. So tell us about the the PC the new uh, web app, which is going to let you stream your PC games to your devices. Tell us about that, Sean. Yeah, the Rainway app. So I think it's due to come out at the end of this year by a guy called Andrew Sampson. He's uh, basically coding this app, and it's going to be a web-based app, so you can access it from any device that can access the internet. It's HTML5 based and runs JavaScript and all that stuff. But he's been online, and obviously one of the big focuses, or one of the things he's been highlighting, because there's been lack of third-party support for the Switch so far, is he's been highlighting its usefulness on the Switch. And he's been shown off on his Twitter account. If you go and check on Twitter, it's at Andrews, Andrew MD5. He's been shown off at streaming uh, Overwatch, Undertale, Batman, Arkham Knights, and there was another game, I forgot what the other one was. But he's been shown off a bunch of games streaming to the console, and yeah, it looks really quite good. He was going on about how, whilst he's been coding it, he's learned some, some more information about the Switch, where we kind of knew that the Tegra X1 processor can stream at 4K 60 frames per second for things like Netflix and those kind of apps. But he's saying you can do that with the web app as well. So it's not going to affect the Switch in the sense that we can't play 4K games, but it is capable of streaming content to the Switch in 4K 60 frames per second or 1080p at 120 frames per second. But obviously the Switch, I think it's native 720p for the for the handheld. So nobody's going to have to like stream a 4K game. You can just stream 1080p and you're going to get really good quality on that little screen. So it's quite exciting, as long as he can get, make sure there's no like really massive lag, 
And I think if you're playing on your handheld, undocked in your in your place or in tabletop mode, you know that's going to be pretty cool for playing your games. You still need a PC. Some people were getting confused about this as well. They thought the games were playing through the Switch, as in the Switch was playing the games. No, you still need a PC to play the games. So whether it's Steam or whatever else, you still need that. And then it just streams like it did with something like the Steam Link or what's the other one? Uh, uh, I'm yeah, the, <laughs> uh, uh, the GeForce one. What's the GeForce one? The GeForce oh, Experience, whatever yeah. it's called. Yeah, so you can do these things. So uh, does, this is going to, I'm going to sound like a tip, but sorry, we'll have to bleep that out. <laughs> Idiot. Um, <laughs> but like, do you need, does your computer need to be good enough to play these games? games well it does but but that's what i'm saying like some people were getting confused thinking their machines need to be super spanked if you can play steam games or if you can play emulation games on your console like unless you're trying to put them up to 4k which there's no point because yeah, the, the, the switch can't handle it but if you just stream at 1080p you'll be able to play most games on like a reasonable spec pc yeah mm. So I think I think that's what's exciting about it. And obviously you need to have a good Wi-Fi connection mm. in your place to, to, yeah. to stream it. And some people could probably stream it like like the Vita. You could sh- stream it across the internet, but then you'll start in, in introducing more lag. Sort of yeah, thing. Mm. I think that's the only pit, bit that's got me a little bit concerned is the just raw, just putting that across the network. Because even with the Steam Link, yeah. having that connected via Ethernet, like from my PC to my router, even then, it's like the lag scale, kind of, the latency is like a bit of, eh, I'm just going to play this on the machine itself. I'm not going to bother with the Steam Link. Yeah. What I'm curious about that, though, is, is is that kicking in because you're streaming a much higher quality game? Like, if, like I'm saying, if you downscale the resolution, you're probably outputting a much smaller data file. Mm. So if you're trying to stream in like 1080p full, like things all turned up to the max. Well... If I'm not mistaken, how it's working is essentially it's not actually putting across any of the settings. That doesn't matter. It's just putting it's like encoding an H two six four, yeah. then sending it across the network. So yeah. setting wise, it shouldn't be a problem. I think it's just purely down to the network speed you can get. What mm. I think if you're going wirelessly to switch, that might be pr- problematic. Yeah. If you're going wired, let's say right into the switch dot, what mm. you can get adapters. I think that would be that would be perfectly fine. Yeah. But Obviously, we'll just need to wait and see how the implementation goes. Yeah, it's like the the demos that we showed off on Twitter, the one he showed off, uh, I forgot what game he showed me, but he actually responded to me on Twitter because I asked him about it. And he sent over a game because I said about the latency. I said, assuming the latency and the input lag wasn't like an issue, then it looks pretty cool. And he got back to it and he, and he like highlighted one of the videos he posted it up and he showed it streaming at four, uh, 4K 60 frames mm. per second. Uh, I think it was near... Uh, automata okay. showed that and it, it looked pretty fluid it wasn't perfect obviously but yeah. it looked good enough that you could play it but the problem is is what I'm worried about is when you start inputting the button inputs mm-hmm. is that going to start affecting the lag because he was turning the camera and when I let go of the stick there was a slight like a half a second mm-hmm. of like catch up lag you know but I don't know it's like that's at 4k like I said maybe if he's got the stream going a lesser quality maybe yeah, but that's the settings thing you were saying. I don't know. How. Even if there is a little bit of latency, I know with a lot of people who use remote playing their PS4s, so it's like you only use it for select games, like yeah. uh, Telltale games. They work perfectly because yeah. you don't really need to be that precise. Yeah, like exactly. Like I think if like if you're trying to play a fast Twitch game, mm-hmm. something like Overwatch, it might not work as good, but something like yeah, like that might work a lot better. So you can take your time in it, and you'd have to worry about super fast. Hmm. <laughs> I was like chewing on my keyboard. They're like, nah. <laughs> no, no. I think there could be a lot of interest in that. It could suit a lot of people, pe- particularly people who have seventy-two games um, bought last week alone. Um, you know, <laughs> not looking at you, Anton. Um, so yeah, no, it's, it could well be of interest to a lot of people. And uh, it's the start of a brand new month, which means that we have the new games coming for PS Plus and Whee! Xbox games with gold. So I'm going to go through this month's ones and we can see what we think first of all start with the xbox one uh games with gold lineup we've got rumble anyone played rumble before sorry i i was i thought you said like rumble like re- rainbow is that what you said yeah rumble yeah Rum- rumble 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 so, is that yeah. like a, is it into rainbows <laughs> kind of it's got a lot of color in it and it's a platformer <laughs> and it's kind of like um like a rainbow but instead of being rain it's run literally so yeah kind of 
<laughs> top 10 game reviews. Never heard of it. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Uh, they've also got Grow Up, which is the other one, which is uh, to do with spaceships. I don't really know much about Grow <laughs> I Up. I thought you were going to say about Growing <laughs> Up, and I was going to be like, yep, yep, makes sense. <laughs> makes sense, yeah. <laughs> Uh, any of you guys played either of these ones? They get pretty good scores. Uh, uh, Metacritic scores of 74% for Grow Up and 82% Runbo. My dad calls Metacritic Metacricket. So I <laughs> call it that as well most of the time now. Met- good scores uh, from crickets. Well, sorry, I'm Met- just getting tongue tied. <laughs> tongue tied now. Um, I played Grow Up. It's literally, as the title involves, you just climb this massive beanstalk like thing and just scale up. That's literally I the thought whole you game. said it was through spaceships, mate. Oh, no, I just read that wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd throw you off the scent. It so says, the, the, actual, the actual line says um, something about, um, oh, no, it, well, it, it, it's to do with exploring the galaxy or something, it says. But yeah, I don't know, I've never played it. Anton's not saying it's... Mm. Maybe I've never <laughs> grew up enough to get to yeah. that. Is this? I was is still this... in like blue skies and stuff. So oh, maybe it goes oh, into maybe space. Didn't yeah, climb high thinking. enough. Okay. Maybe it's like Jack and the Beanstalk, and you go into space. I don't remember that mm. part of the fairy tale. Jack happen? and the Beanstalk. <laughs> okay. It, well, anyway, either way, uh, it's free, so you can play it and decide for yourself if it's about aliens or not, or or just about growing up. Uh, I don't know grow up at all. I, is it? Yeah, the animation on this is like the. Um, it reminds me of like oh, what's that little big planet type kind right. of. Is that is that right, Anton? Would you say? Um, Ratchet. You both are talking about different games. I think it's like Possibly. no, because like it's it's a cross between that and like Ratchet and Clank. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly, I don't know. God, I guys, dear. you do. You seems like you're talking about different things entirely. I think um, you must evolve during the game, so uh, maybe you change over time. <laughs> I well, feel look, like that game's in... title, though, is like a challenge. It's like, grow up. No. <laughs> I'm not like, stick up. <laughs> well, if you've got, if you've got games uh, with gold for the Xbox, then you're in for a nice surprise because it's one of the two things that we've just described right now. <laughs> you just get into um, the game. It's a racing game. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. Uh, anyway, so PlayStation Plus July tw- uh, 2017 lineup. This time I can definitely... I know these games because I was a bit, I was a bit disappointed because they're both... It's actually a really good month for PlayStation Plus. Oh, it's so good good if you don't have the games yeah well that's the that's problem that's how i of... feel most months now <laughs> Comple- com- completed both of these games so i'm like oh oh well so yeah, we've got the game game of thrones telltale series which is actually really good if I'll you've not played that, that, that one that, it is really good um i've got it on the xbox like 360 so that's what, like tales of the borderlands it was a couple of months ago so i've downloaded that as well because i'm like trophies mm. <laughs> might as well do it again yeah, it's uh, it's a good it's it's a cool story though, and um, if you're a Game of Thrones fan, it's well worth having a go. There's a but even if you're like me and refuse to watch the TV show because you like the books too much, it's not about anybody in either. Right. They're no. completely made up, so it's fine. But what's <laughs> cool is that there's um, there's cameo appearances from some of the TV actors or characters in it which is really cool and there's some crossover stuff as well i don't know about the books because i haven't read the books i'm the lazy person that's watched the tv show cats read the books but certainly with the tv show there's some quite obvious points where you're like oh that's happening over there oh cool yeah like i think it's around the second series of the tv show slash that's right probably the second book but the TV show kind of went off. I need to watch the TV show, man. It's so good. I've watched the first two series and then it started to... Like, I don't think this is a spoiler for anyone who's not seen it. They won't know what I'm talking about. But as soon as they sent Gendry off in that boat, I was like, no, I'm out. Done. This has not happened in the book. (laughs) This was a different guy, so... I you realise that George R. 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 Martin's probably going to die before he finishes the book. Probably, because well, I've been waiting since <laughs> 2011 for the, the mm. last, well, yeah. the second last book to come out. But I'm I'm holding strong. I uh, I mute anyone on Facebook or Twitter or anywhere that talks about Game of Thrones when it's on TV, so that I don't actually know what's happening in the TV That's program. Dead. And I am going to stay that way, so no spoilers, please. Empty. Thank you. <laughs> oh, God. <But> Everyone <laughs> okay. dies. The game's Moving fun, on. so you should play it. It is fun, and uh, the other game is also an absolute belter of a game this Amazing. month from PlayStation Plus, Until Dawn, Woo. which is uh, a brilliant really? game. And uh, if so have any of you guys watched Mr. Robot before? Yeah, yeah. I have. Malik, I kind of fancy that guy. Something so. Malik. 
Yeah, um, Rami Malek. So Rami he's Malek. um he's he's, he's the one that's in uh he's in Until Dawn and I played Until Dawn before I watched Mr. Robot and spent the first two episodes of Mr. Robot Robot going. Me I, but, too. That, that guy, that guy, it's him. Oh my oh, god! Him. And also, there because everyone in it is like an actress or mm. actor who mm-hmm. you probably like. You might not know all of them, but there's some that you do like. Um, Hayden, I can't pronounce her last name. Yeah, Pana, uh, pa- is that the blonde one? Pa- 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 the one from Heroes slash yeah, she's gorgeous. Nashville. She's in it, and the psychiatrist guy who's in it. He's in quite a lot of films as well. Including Chocola, if anyone is a, a Johnny Depp. Very, previous, I've seen that. Very, previous it's, Johnny Depp. He's got fan. a very well-known face, the the psychiatrist in it. You, he's one of those he's actors a, that yeah. you go, oh yeah, I've seen him before, but you don't necessarily. Well, you know won't realise until you see things that he's in after you've played it, and then you're like, oh my god, it's that guy. But yeah. is that is that actually Rami Malek in the game because he's got a twin brother? You know that. His I, brother's called Sammy Malek. Are you, is this a joke? I'm being Are you serious. leading up to that? I'm, I'm really bad. I'm, joke. I'm being genuinely serious. Really? He's, yep. He's I'm looking at twin brother. It's his brother. I'm, I don't Does, is it an identical no, no, no. twin brother? Like, yeah. Yeah. He's got an identical, uh, identical twin brother, uh, <laughs> and he's called Simon Ramek and Malik uh, and Rami Malik, or whatever it is. Uh, but it's not him in the game. We're just joking. But <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> it could be his twin brother. Add the mind blown noise again there to me because I was like, there's two of them. <laughs> Boom. Yeah. Good. I just, good, made, I just made me. cats weekend. Thank you. Yeah, we've I've l- I learned a lot today. It's been good. I'm glad I well, came here now. Well, the um, I just checked and it's definitely Rami, not Sammy. <laughs> it's, it's on. Yeah. It's 100. But anyway, both games are on really PlayStation this month. Really good month for PlayStation mm. Plus. Unfortunately for both Cat and I, uh, we've completed both those games, mm. so it's not much point. Uh, Anton, have you played any of those uh, those, uh, those games? Mm. Nope, um, I'm a wimp, so horror's not for me, and I've never seen a Game of Thrones or read a Game of but Thrones. But <laughs> Until Dawn doesn't, like, I don't feel it as like a horror game. At first no. I thought it was going to be like that, but it's just more thrilling than that. It's okay. more just exciting. There's a couple of creepy bits in it. There's like, uh, yeah, but like, not really. Like, yeah. nothing would you'd actually be like, oh my god, I'm so scared. No, it's more just like... Oh, it's intriguing. A bit of a, no, I can tell scary. a jump scare is coming up because mm. the music goes all tense and you're like, Ooh. The scariest part is when it kicks in the quick timer events. Yeah. And you're like, oh, you're like, Even Ooh. like trying to just climb a wall <laughs> yeah. and it's just like, because the controller makes that noise, like, do, 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 and you're like, which point is triangle <laughs> again, even though you know. But it's like, yeah, that's the only, that's the scariest okay. bits, I think. It's just in- it's like intense. <laughs> if you've got shaky hands as well, keep, keep near like a surface. <laughs> that can ruin it for you. No yeah. spoilers, but it, it, my shaky hands ruined the game for me. <laughs> yeah. uh, PlayStation Plus will be on the 4th of July, so by the time this is out, uh, it'll be another day or so to go. So you might be listening to this whilst downloading them. And the Xbox Games with Gold is live uh now i believe so you can get those ones uh now so that's that's exciting so it's a good month for both xbox and playstation particularly playstation but if you're on xbox you'll get a nice surprise with <laughs> the games are so that's lovely um, more shots for xbox <laughs> shots fired <Yay. laughs> all right let's um we're going to look at some of the upcoming releases before we do that let's quickly talk about the Super Nintendo Classic, or as it's called, the Nintendo Classic Mini Super Nintendo Entertainment System, which is... Uh, 20, I know. <laughs> 21 games, and probably the most exciting and most talked about is Star Fox 2, or Star Wing 2, as I like to call it. Yeah. Uh, I found it super cute. The the development team that made it, like, 21 years ago, they literally had a launch party, like, a couple weeks ago. <laughs> it was like, they hadn't Delighted. touched that game for ages, there's dust on it. And now they're like, yeah, let's go for drinks. <laughs> have you confirmed, though, Did because the game was never finished? Yeah. So has it been finished or what? I think so, yeah. No, it was... It, you just get there and then it just stops. Yeah. No, it's, as far as I know, um, the game was finished but was never released. They did actually get it completed, right. in, apart from the testing phase, as far as I know, and they just never had the opportunity to actually release it. So I think it's, it was a finished game. It's just never been released. Any, anywhere, not even Japan, which yeah, is unusual. I think it was normally... the, the interesting thing with that was like it wasn't released because at the time, the Saturn and the PlayStation were just out and their 3D used a dedicated 3D processor. So yeah. the SNES was using the Super FX chip and Nintendo apparently, this is what some people are saying in the development side was, they were worried that it would look inferior so they never brought, brought it out. 
Yeah, that's there's crazy. A, there's a lot of rumors with that game because I also heard another rumor that Miyamoto, who was working on the Star Fox 64 team, mm. uh, ambushed that game because he thought it was competing with his product, and obviously, um, he's got quite um, an ego for many good reasons. He's done mm. a lot of great things, so apparently he deliberately cancelled that game, then stole its assets, so his game would look <laughs> inferior. So. <laughs> A lot of drama behind that game. Yeah. <laughs> Miyamoto, if you're listening, get in touch and let us know. I'll invite you down to the studio. <laughs> Imagine you actually responded. <laughs> I'll buy you coffee. I've never mentioned anything about you sabotaging Star Fox 2. Yeah. <laughs> that's a massive one, yeah. That's like the fact that that's coming out. That was their their big, big kind of surprise. Because I think I think there was like the code went out. Someone got access to the mm. code, that, like the unfinished or un unreleased version of the code. And you can emulate it somewhere, but you know, I think people had like the prototype carts or something, and they were worth a fortune. So, getting that game, that's a big seller. Like that's a big, a big, like pool for that, a big what draw for it. What does Star Fox do? I yeah. know he's just a fox. That you played Star Fox before? No. Star Fox is like, amazing. Like, he the flies a, a, an Arwing. a rocket or something. Yeah, an Arwing ship. But it was like it was just such a cool game. It's <laughs> just, know. Yeah. It's just kind of like a. It's space shooter. It's like yeah. on like a set path, and you're just moving so around. So do you shooting. get to come out of the ship? In as the, the later fox? games, like in the GameCube one, you got to go yeah. out of your ship. But what was it called? Dinosaur Planet. I thought it was be called Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think it was Dinosaur Planet in maybe Japan, and it was called something else here. Star Fox Adventures here, or vice versa. Mm. It was like it was it was two different names. Dinosaur like Planet. Star Wing and Star Fox. Pretty cool. A fox exploring a dinosaur yeah. planet. <laughs> and your best pal was a Triceratops. Okay. It was awesome. <laughs> you again! Anton and I think we play in different games from everybody constantly. I'm secretly from like a different multiverse. It's yeah, just like or you my just multiverse is similar games but completely different. Differently. This is like the conflicting episode. It's like the keep you guessing and you never know. It's the potluck episode. Um, they have got the, the 20, 21 games, so you've got the 20 games plus Star, Star Fox 2. Uh, just in terms of getting hold of this though, it's, again, proving to be pretty difficult unless you're Sean and you pre-order from everywhere, meaning that other people like me can't. Um, <laughs> Sean, how do I get hold of a Super Nintendo Classic well, Mini? Well, if I get both of them, I could sell you one for £500. Uh, Great, well, to, be honest, to be honest, it's like I ordered it from Amazon. Amazon's orders went up earlier, but I never trust Amazon. Now, we've talked about this before, but they cancel stuff and it's an absolute nightmare. So I was waiting for Nintendo to put it up on their site. I ordered it from there as well. But I ordered it from Amazon, and I thought, well, if it doesn't come by Amazon, I've got Nintendo's as a backup. If I get both, then I'll probably just sell one on or something, or give it away as a competition, I don't know. But if you've got this, uh, if Michael's got the NES Mini, I could trade you. Yeah, <laughs> then I've got one of each. <laughs> that's going nowhere. That's going nowhere, mate. Um, all right, then. So that's exciting. Uh, what's the release? It's September, isn't it? Or is that right? September something. Well, I mm. think it's planned to release them, but... I think the, the NES Mini got delayed, didn't it, or something? Yeah, it did, yeah. yeah. It got delayed, and then there was literally no more, and that was it. They made six six different NES Minis for six people. I think that's about as many as they made, <laughs> wasn't it? So hopefully we'll get a bit more than that this time. But, um, yeah, I, I would expect to see more opportunities to pre-order at some point, and then you'll have to be quick, probably mm -hmm. one hour or something to get them. Um, all right, let's take a look at some of the upcoming releases. Actually, before we do that, just a quick word on Sega Forever. So this we talked about a couple of weeks ago, and then I think you guys maybe touched on this last week as well, but there's been a few teething problems, shall we say. A lot of people unhappy. Um, I was reading an interview about this with uh, the director of um, the company behind the release, and I, the, the, he was saying that, um, yeah, yeah, it's still been pretty positive on the whole. And the interviewer was saying, yeah, but like, you know, these reviews are just from normal people saying that that's nothing, like this is playing nothing like the original <laughs> did. There's problems everywhere. Well, you know, every every game release has teething problems. So anyway, what's happening, guys? Is it is it really broken? Yeah, it looks like the emulation's just whack and just... <laughs> whack is yep. the, whack. the that, real that's term. That's the street term. <laughs> <laughs> so who? Um, yeah, it just looks like poor emulation. What well, is a shame because we've had good... Mega Drive emulation for years now, and if it's struggling with the Mega Drive, mm -hmm. what's it going to be like when we get up to Dreamcast games? Yeah, what's well, concerning? I think they've like ported it over using Unity. Indeed. Yeah, so it's like obviously there's some problems there, but you know I think I think the biggest problem with this stuff is nobody knew about the service until pretty much it was available. There were some rumours of it. Some people had saw some stuff, but it was kind of nobody knew about it, and it came out 
and they've not had this stuff sorted. How Sega can't get that sorted out before it even releases, when nobody even knows about it, why not just get it perfected and then release it? It's like, to bring out something and it's got flaws with frame rates and using Unity or whatever, when there's emulators that do emulation almost perfect, is beyond me as a company. To me, that is just ridiculous because you're instantly, you've already put people in a downer about the service when realistically they could have just made it actually working super smooth. And it isn't like it's like a time sensitive product. Like exactly. a modern AAA game, it's like, I understand you want it out for Christmas, you don't want your game mm. to be outdated, you want it out now while it's still relevant and new. Mm -hmm. But these are ancient games that nobody even knew the service was coming along. So it's yeah. like, there's no reason it should be delayed. Exactly. It should be this broken yeah. in the state. It's just, it's just, it just seems sloppy, you know what I mean? It's mm -hmm. like, like, these games have been out in, like a bunch of these games have been out, there's Dreamcast ones as well, have been out in the App Store and Android Store for ages now, and they work fine. But they now put them on this service, and, you know, if you're expecting people to either sit through the ad, like the adverts or pay for the fee to not get the adverts and you've not got a fully working product when you've had plenty of time, as you say, it just just, just seems weird. It's like, I, I don't understand how someone like Sega or whoever else can get this so messed up. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's just, I'm saying here, because there's a lot of Sega games that I'm looking forward to, and it's like, you can't get Sonic to run on an iPhone. Mm. How am I expecting Sonic Forces to be good? Just, I want a yeah. good games from you, Sega. I love you. Stop. Just be good. <laughs> I want to give you my money. <laughs> oh, guys. Yeah, it's been like that for years. It's not going to change anytime soon. Come on, Anton. We know that. We know what Sega's uh, like. <laughs> Can I, Sean, ask, just so, sorry before we get into anything else, I had like a bit of a light bulb moment <laughs> over my head a minute ago. Nothing to do with what we were talking about, of course. But <laughs> I saw... And I had to Google it right there because mm -hmm. I thought it might have been a dream because I've been sleeping a lot this weekend. <laughs> but this I, is a dream. I saw that there's like a Danganronpa BR demo on the PlayStation Store. I've not even checked. And I no. really want to play it. And I just Googled it and it's real. I honestly, <laughs> for a minute, after I thought about it, was like, whoa, is I it? might have made that up. Oh, well. It's real. It's like a class trial demo for VR. Because I, I saw it in the demos. I was looking for like demos the other day on yeah. the like, PlayStation Store. And I saw it and I was like, oh, well, I'll get that. damn, I don't have VR. But There's actually a bunch of games that I, like, I've not actually been playing my consoles anywhere near as much because I've been doing the daily fix and everything. So my time's just been taken up. But I keep saying, right, I'll get down and I'll sit down and play some of these games again. And there's loads of VR games that's come out that I've been wanting to play. Apollo 11 that we talked about. I need to play this Far Point Star Trek Bridge crew. There's so many games I've still got to get back in touch with. So, yeah, I might, like, I'll get that and we can play that. Yeah. I'll get, a, like, a, an actual VR night. When When's the next time you're down in Edinburgh, Michael? Well, if you've got Star Trek on the go, then <laughs> tomorrow. Tomorrow, <laughs> the next day. I've not got it yet. I need to, but like, like, I need to buy it. But I've been holding off, but that's what I'm saying. I just ah, need to get okay. some of these games in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, definitely. I mean, we could work that. That'd be good fun. We should, we should do that. And we, should, we need to get um, a transport. We can transport over you. <laughs> that's fine. Yeah, absolutely. Thank yeah, beat me up. <laughs> beat me up, Shawnee. Right, let's move on then um, <laughs> to releases. So a few releases then on the way, and we um, we occasionally look at some of the upcoming releases. It's a it's a quieter month. It is it's summer, so uh, let's see what we've got coming up. So in July, then July the 11th on Xbox One and PC, we have Fable Fortune. What the heck's that? <laughs> is, that is that a card game? It's a card-based game uh, based see. on Fable, as far as I can see. When did we start making card games of everything? And when did we have to make card games not be a legitimate thing? Like You know what I mean? They're not actual mm. card games. They're virtual cards. Mm -hmm. I like Spider Solitaire, I'm fine with, but like <laughs> we've gone too far now. Gwent is uh, a thing mm -hmm. as well. Like, of all the things of The Witcher you're trying to expand upon, Gwent, really? Well, really? What's, what's weird about that is, like, you take, take Nintendo as a card, um, was it Hanafuda cards? They came up with like, that's their first product. So, you take like something like that, they've moved on to Pokemon and stuff now. But basically, entertainment changed to digital media and you had video games. So you went from like physical cards to digital video games. But it's like now they're going back again. That was only there because you never had video games. Now you've got video games. Why are you making stuff We're like making that? We're making video games of card games. I know, it's just like that. It's like, like we've it. moved on with card games. That's the whole point. But anyway, <laughs> Fable card game just sounds like a big no for me. 
Sorry. It's, you get a bonus nah. card with <laughs> Peter Molyneux's like face on it. <laughs> That's a bonus card. The way, the way you said that, Kat, I felt like we were on the X Factor. It's like I it's was a doing no like, like a hand thing, like Simon Cole and everything. I'm out. There. <laughs> I am oh. out. All right, then just a very quick yes or no, then because um, we've got a few more games to get through in July. So Final Fantasy XII: The Zodiac Age on PlayStation Four coming out on July the 11th. Yes or no? No. 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 <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yonder, the Cloud Catcher Chronicles on PlayStation 4, coming out on July the 18th. This looks kind of cool. Uh, I heard of it. No. <laughs> is it like a like a platformer? It's an no. It's an open world cutesy RPG, and it's uh, at the 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 description says farm fish craft and explore in eight beautiful biomes, all <laughs> while trying to investigate the dark threat plaguing the island of Gamia. And it's quite Ooh. colourful. It looks cool. That sounds like Animal Crossing, but yes, it looks also a bit like like a mystery. Well, it reminds me of <laughs> like a futuristic version of the old style Zelda crossed with <laughs> Animal Crossing. A futuristic version of the old style of Zelda. Yeah, like so art, artworks, <laughs> artwork wise. Yeah, check it out yonder the Cloud Catcher Chronicles. That I'm, sounds I'm gonna, nice. I'm gonna actually type that in now to remind myself to check that out. <laughs> uh, Cloud Catcher. Right. Okay. I'll come back to that. Uh, upcoming releases. Then where were we? Oh yeah, we're on yonder. Layton's Mystery Journal. No, sorry, Layton's Mystery Journey. That'll be Professor Layton then. Catriel and the Millionaire's Conspiracy on iOS and Android on July the twentieth. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, Trump no here. Sorry. This I'm next like one's worst gamers ever. This next one's a yes for me, and I've even gone for the controller. It's Splatoon Two on the Switch, July the twenty first. I've got it ordered, but yeah, I'm not like I'm, like I'm not massively hyped about it. Yeah, it felt when I played the test fire, it just felt like Splatoon One, yeah. which is good, but I also have Splatoon One. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have a Switch, so uh, no, I don't. No I don't me. have. <laughs> Splatoon 1, so uh, again, that's why I'm guess, excited. Yeah. Again, I ordered it from the uh, Nintendo store because it came with a bonus t-shirt. Mm. It's got the logo on it, which looks cool. But that's what I'm more excited than anything, the t-shirt. A t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, by the way, I just looked up Yonder because uh, we were talking about that, and it says, um, it looks a bit Zelda-y, and <laughs> it reminds <laughs> us also of Stardew Valley, which is pretty much what we were just yeah. saying there, right? So that's, right. that's cool. Right. Have they got, are the reviews in? What, what are the reviews in? Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. <No. laughs> Maybe not. Oh, 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 interesting. There's no combat. Well, uh, Okay. There's no combat in Animal Crossing. But so <laughs> it's getting on. Well, and, oh, okay, that doesn't really count because that's like on PlayStation Store. But on the PlayStation Store, it's getting good reviews. Of yeah, four but people have to buy it to give it reviews, right? Exactly. Mm. That's why I'm mm. not really sure that that's really accurate. Um, there isn't many reviews yet, but it, it, the, you know what? It looks interesting. You should definitely check that out if you like Animal Crossing. Then check it out. Uh, anyway, uh, sorry. Let's move on. Where, where are we now? Oh yeah, <laughs> Splatoon. Feet. <laughs> This next one looks quite interesting. It's coming out on the Switch. It's already out on the Vita and the PS4, I think. It's Fate Extella, the Umbral Star. I've heard of it, but no. Never, it's a, never heard of it. It's a kind of uh, Japanese uh, sort of button-based type. Button-based. <laughs> Button-based, as in <laughs> on the controller that, that everything has. <laughs> no, no, it's one of those games that they do in Japan a lot. What they call again? Rhythm um, games. Please tell me. No, rhythm games. I, I love those. like like an action video game. I don't know. <laughs> like no more heroes or something. So a button-based action video game. <laughs> Um, no, it's, 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 it's the great day of descriptions for games, really. <laughs> honestly. Um, no, it's like um, a turn-based kind of game. I really don't know how you got the button-based <laughs> thing there. Because <laughs> I, well, I completely can visualise it now that you just said the turn-based yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that was what sense. I was trying to say in the first place. I'm just not, I'm not with it today. I haven't <laughs> had enough sleep. Been travelling and gigging. Right, okay, moving on. Then last one, maybe. Uh, I've lost my sheet now. This is going so well. Um, <laughs> let me come back to the list. Oh, here we go. I've come releases. Uh, no, I've lost it again. Oh, yeah, here we go. So two more, uh, three more. Oh, sorry, Pyre on the PlayStation 4 and PC, P-Y-R-E. Is that the one that? you were talking about before? Well, no. Oh, <laughs> Why was I talking about that? There was someone talking about um, that. I said, like, Pyre, like, it's like a... Were we in the topic last like week? A, I don't think so. No, I... What's it about? Something to do with Fire? We were talking Pyre about Vampire or something. 
yeah, I don't think it's the same one. No, Pirate... no, I was talking about vampire. Oh, right, okay. I thought Va it was like vampires. This is pyres, like as All a fire. Right. It's a role playing game again, and um, as far as I can see, it's uh, well, it says here uh, the player controls a character who's in exile that meets three other exiles who, upon finding the player character, is literate. <laughs> Have them join their party and name them the reader to help them travel the land of purgatory, looking to cleanse the souls by defeating other exiles. So that you know. turned from like fairy tale to Dante's Inferno very quickly, didn't it? Yeah, I'm the not land sure if it knows. Of purgatory. <laughs> Does it even know what it is? Um, okay, next uh, two more to go. Then uh, Danganronpa, another episode, Ultra Despair Girls on the PC on July the 27th. Well, I would recommend it if you really like Danganronpa because it is in that universe, obviously. It's based between the first and the second Danganronpa games, but it's not the same style of gameplay. It's more like a third-person shooter and there's like 20 million Monokumas. <laughs> so if you want to kill Monokuma, that's the game for you. But I wouldn't ever want to kill him. So, so it's a no from me. <laughs> I've already no. played it on the Vita, <laughs> so I won't uh, be getting okay, it for okay, PC. Okay. And then finally, uh, in July, Hey Pikmin on the 3DS. Yeah, the 3DS is dead to me. I'm like, Ooh. Switch only. <laughs> died. Well, I like Pikmin as like a multiplayer game, like a co-op little things game. I wouldn't actually get it and just play it myself. I would just, I used to play it on the Wii U, I think, with mm. my sister. Mm. It's kind of, it's like a side scroller now, though, isn't it? That like this hey pikmin it's not like the 3d oh it's not like actual pikmin yeah no it's a little bit different this one i think i think it's the same mechanics just in 2d yeah well to be honest i kind of like the look of it in 2d more than 3d it reminds me of lemons a little well, i suppose yeah i'm always done for more lemons well, it's in my probably life. Me, I, won't be I think i've said no to every single game well, no, I said, I said Splatoon, so... Splatoon, come on, was, I need somebody to play. I, I, I haven't even got your, your Switch code yet, for goodness sake. I mean, what is that really? all about? No, <laughs> yeah. friend name or whatever. Sean's like, really? And Small friend doesn't want to give you. <laughs> yeah, he'll give me one with just, like, one digit wrong, so I'm forever thinking it's just forever <laughs> wrong. Um, all right, then, so let's move on, then, to the Retro Corner. So it's the Retro Corner, yay! <laughs> So <laughs> I've taken over because we kind of forgot it was the retro corner. We've no idea. Uh, it has who... been a while since there's been a retro corner. Well, yeah, I think it's, it's three weeks. Retro. Well, I guess that would work. But also, <laughs> I think I've run out now. I think, like, because obviously you can't run out of like new games and like new things you've been playing, but. I can run out of memories. I can run out of <laughs> things that happened in the past. And well, I think I might have run out of them now. We are going to be bringing in a couple of new features hopefully soon. So if anyone has any suggestions, Sean, how can they get in touch? Uh, probably through YouTube. It's probably the best way to get in touch. Uh, leave a comment or something. You can also contact uh, the email. So gamify247 at gmail.com. That's still up. Uh, or you can contact through the Small Fry Unify email, which is info at smallfryunify.com but yeah jump onto jump onto youtube because that's where the podcasts are going up so we get them up each week and you can respond in the comments and we'll take notes and stuff and give you a shout out in the show yeah do a I feature feel... that's like like i like cat litter as an idea but i yeah. have found it hard to to play games that mm. are not on the internet or the on the yeah of course store, I guess. of course <laughs> um, I, I really want to do a quiz related thing where one of us each week takes a turn of Quizmaster because of uh, if you've ever listened to uh, not that we want to promote other podcasts but the IGN podcast in, in the UK is actually quite good and uh, it's not as good as ours but it's, it's, a, it's a good second best they've got a slightly bigger budget than us and um, they have this thing called keyword countdown that they do right so basically what they do it's obviously they look on more look at more than just games but they have 10 keywords from from uh, IMDb and from the keywords you have to guess the film so it could be like so if I did one for example uh, I could start off with like DeLorean Back to the Future yeah you got it yeah that's a kind of idea Fast and but, the but obviously <laughs> DeLorean would be like clue number nine not clue number one because that would be far too easy yeah. but that's a lot of fun and whoever gets it first gets the points and it's good you know so that's the kind of thing I, I'd love to have a quiz related type game on the show so we should throw that out there if anyone's got any cool ideas let's do that yeah 
I think it would be cool down the line if we all had our own individual sections. Like, we just jump between them and have random stuff every week. Because who needs, like, a consistent show? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> who wants that in their life? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, who then, needs consistency? Right, so... consistently uh, inconsistent. <laughs> exactly. Absolutely. Um, okay, then. So, I am on the Retro Corner, and I'm going to go very retro with a brand new game. A what? But is it a remake of an old game? <laughs> no, it's not a remake. It's a brand new game. Is but it a new game on the Dreamcast or something? Oh, it's... for God's... Is this, like, I was going to say, is this stupid Star Fox one that we've already talked about? <laughs> <laughs> it's Star Fox 2. No, it's not. Um, <laughs> it's a game that I've mentioned before, actually, and I've, I've bought it. It was a Kickstarter project, and it's coming out on the Sega Mega Drive, and you get a choice of cartridge... Um, in terms of whether you want the original very early with the kind of the checks on the box type design or if you want a slightly more modern 90s, like mid-90s Sega Mega Drive or Genesis box. You even get to pick if you want a Genesis or Mega Drive depending on where you are. And the game is called... I haven't told you yet, that's why you don't know. The game is called (laughs) Tanglewood. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) What's that okay. like? I don't know what I'm supposed yeah. to infer from that, though. Like, that doesn't. I, I like Tangle, that's yummy. I... That's a good drink. <laughs> I, is, did you, is it like Tangle Wood? Like Tangles you get in your hair? Oh, you Tangle. Uh, I, I mean. Tangle. Okay, let me read you the description. It looks great. The gameplay looks really really good it looks like they've squeezed a lot out of the the mega drive and it's coming on the original cartridge which is really exciting it's the first mega drive game i'll have bought in probably 20 years pretty much so set in a fictional world the game follows a young creature nim with a silent n on the end by the way who is separated from the family pack after the sun sets unable to get back to the safety of the underground home nim must find a way to survive the night terrors and get to morning Tanglewood's world is a dangerous one after dark and Nim must use skills of evasion, special abilities, traps and trickery, all to defeat predators. Tanglewood is programmed in pure 6 to 8,000 assembly language using original Sega development tools and processes from the 1990s. So, it's a side-scrolling game that's like a fox, you're a fox, and you jump from platform to higher platform and you avoid, avoid stuff and it looks very beautiful and uh, it's, uh, it's exciting and you can even play a demo at tanglewoodgame.com. I'll tell you what is cool, like with that there, is I, I like I used to love the old Mega Drive boxes. They were yeah, so cool, too. and the me cartridges too. as well. I think that's one of the the big kind of draws for people as well is the is the look of the of that era. So you've got mm. collectors, people that collect Mega Drive games. I think there's there's a lot. There are a lot of Mega Drive games, but I know of people who have had. Um, you know, like the whole collection or maybe missing one or two titles. So those kind of people are going to want to have this because it's an experience of of having something brand new, but it's also adding to the collection. There was a game that uh, came out in the Mega Drive two or three years ago, and it's really expensive. If you, you To oh. even get get hold of it now on eBay, it's like £100 plus. Um, isn't that uh, Pure Solar? Yes, Pure Solar, oh, yeah. that's the one. And, and I have a feeling that this may do a similar thing. Mm. So... It's one of those games. It's been really well done. The I've I've watched it from kind of I didn't I didn't um, back it until quite late on. I watched the kind of early development process just to see where it was going. Uh, it's it looks like they've done a really really good job of capturing the sixteen bit bit era really faithfully. And the fact that it comes in a proper Mega Drive case, it's the proper. Do you remember the Mega Drive cases when they went to the kind of the blue up the side and the blue so like the top and uh, bottom board so sorry the left and the bottom border and then the picture would be the rest of it and it's yeah. mega drive mm-hmm. up the spine it's they've gone for that kind of look um or you can have the original kind of old school checked box look oh, if you that prefer the one. yeah i think the blue box is just looked a bit cheap and tacky oh good that's the one i've gone for i just <laughs> <that one>. sorry <laughs> I was waiting for that. <laughs> yeah, I actually have gone for that. Although now you've made me, I'm almost tempted to go for the black, the, the other one. I, I couldn't decide. I, I quite like the blue box. But I think because I was see, ex- by that point, I was really into you know well, Mega see, Drive gaming. Saying that, the blue one's probably going to be the 
the more rare one because nobody will want to buy that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Nice plan, Legal. Look. Like your plan. <laughs> good one. Yeah. No, I've just got bad taste. Thank you very much. Um, but it does look really good and I am really impressed with what they've done. I've loved the kind of, this is a proper kind of labour of love. They've done this because, you know, they love the Mega Drive. There's no, I don't see them making masses of money out of doing this. It's not really the most easy um, thing to do on a cartridge-based uh, console from 20 years ago these days so fair play to them, it'll be interesting to see but that's my retro game of the week and it's brand new it's Tanglewood on the Mega Drive have a look at that, yeah, cool so there you go, check do, it out do we know if it's coming to any other platforms or is it just the Mega Drive so remember with Pure Solar they ended up putting mm. that on PS4 anyway do you know anything they, about that? I think they are actually um, I think one of the, the stretch goals was to make this available for the Dreamcast as far as I remember. <laughs> you were like, were you waiting for something like PC? <laughs> yeah. Like some, something from the 21st century. Come on now, Anton, don't, don't be stupid. I mean, the, 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 you know, we are getting as close as we can with the Dreamcast, but I'm pretty sure that was one of the stretch goals. Um, but apart from that, I don't know. I, I mean, you can play the demo online, so you can go online and play the demo anyway at tanglewoodgame.com. I suspect at some point it'll be... <clears throat> Ported to PC, I would have thought, and probably on sale for like a pound or something. But um, that's not why people are buying it on the Mega Drive. They're buying it for the nostalgia factor for sure. So, um, but yeah, it's uh, it looks interesting. I'm looking forward to getting. I think it. I think it's arriving in September, so I'll be able to play it and and let you know what I think and whether it's whether it's worth the money that I'm paying for it. Cool, exciting. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's about it then. We'll be back next week for episode 23. We're looking for some new ideas as well for our uh, features. So if you have got one, let us know. And um, if you have any other uh, reason to get in touch with us, whether there's something you like or you hate or something, well, may not hate, don't, don't, don't email us if you hate us. <laughs> um, but if there's something else you'd like us to do or to feature, then get in touch with us. Sean, best ways to do that one more time, please? Yeah, just send us an email through gamify247 at gmail.com or media or info at smallfryunify.com. But go into the YouTube, keep saying it, YouTube is the place to be, to be, sorry. <laughs> Go on there. To pee pee. there. <laughs> YouTube is the place to pee. <laughs> Go into YouTube and subscribe to it and leave us a comment in the section there and then we can respond to it because that's where we're kind of doing most of the stuff. Does the, the email have a, a slash in it? Like 24 slash 7? No, it's just a 247. So. 247. Yeah, but like I'm saying, YouTube is where everything's at. That's where all, all the other stuff is as well along with the Gamify 247. So that's where I'm sort of focusing stuff and where I'm paying attention to people's comments it's just yeah a lot we of won't easier. actually read your email that's <laughs> yeah. what he's trying to say right now <laughs> <laughs> but it means it means we can give you shout and respond to that stuff there great looking forward to uh our next episode and, and hopefully a new feature if we can think of one by then if not it'll be the retro corner and it'll be anton's turn next week so <laughs> you just like you picked it random it's you anton. yeah <laughs> yeah absolutely right so we'll uh we'll see you next week enjoy your week of gaming and goodbye bye, bye. bye. see you next time au revoir au <laughs> revoir